Achieving interstellar travel is arguably the greatest challenge humanity will ever face in its time. If it is to ever be accomplished, many technical obstacles must be overcome. But having said that, hasn't interstellar travel already been achieved? In 2012, Voyager 1 had travelled far enough away from the Sun that it was considered to have entered interstellar space, thus becoming the first spacecraft to do so. At the time, the mission had lasted 35 years, but yet the spacecraft had only travelled a pitiful 0.06% of the distance to the next star system, which is Proxima Centauri. At this speed, Voyager 1 would take on the order of 70,000 years to reach the next star, which is frankly a pathetic effort. The problem with current rocketry is that it is extremely inefficient. All rockets operate like this, but for the sake of an example, let's look at the Saturn V moon rocket, which successfully landed six Apollo missions on the surface of the moon in the 60s and 70s. Unsurprisingly, the majority of our rocket is fuel. And by the time we have managed to reach space, nearly all of that fuel has been used. In the case of the Saturn V, all of this boosts us to space and ensures that the remaining rocket can complete half an orbit of the Earth. This part of the rocket fires once and circularizes the orbit around the Earth before it fires again and keeps firing until we have attained a high enough velocity such that we can escape the gravitational pull of the Earth. At this point, this part of the rocket has run out of fuel and hence the motor is shut off, thus leaving the spacecraft to coast towards the moon. And when we say coast, we mean that no thrust is coming out of that motor. A similar idea to this coasting tactic was used on the Voyager 1 flight where it slingshot itself around the solar system, thus enabling it to gain free energy. And although this can save valuable fuel, because we are coasting, it is extremely time consuming. The point of all this is that the biggest hurdle in achieving interstellar flight is not the construction of a sophisticated spaceship or the establishment of a colony on a far-flung planet. The biggest hurdle is the method of spaceflight that is currently employed. If we want to achieve an interstellar mission in a reasonable time frame, let's say 50 years, then a new method of spaceflight must be developed. Luckily, an alternate conceptual method of spaceflight does exist and is known as constant acceleration travel. As the name suggests, this requires a spacecraft to constantly accelerate over half the mission's distance and then constantly decelerate over the remaining half. The suitable acceleration rate is 1g, or 9.81 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration due to gravity here on the Earth. This acceleration rate is used as if humans were to be on board such a flight, they would be able to withstand this acceleration for a long period of time. Of course, a big question mark with this method is that if we are constantly accelerating, we are going to need a lot of fuel. And remember that all of this was needed to get us to space in the first place. A follow-up question is that if we are constantly accelerating, we are eventually going to reach the speed of light. And then what? After all, Einstein told us that we cannot travel faster than light. But I think this is a point of discussion for another time. If currently used chemical propellants such as liquid hydrogen were more efficient, then constant acceleration spaceflight would already be possible. However, chemical reactions are extremely inefficient, and thus using a chemical propellant, constant acceleration spaceflight is impossible. Therefore, a more efficient type of propellant and motor must be used. And academics who have devoted their entire lives to researching this area believe that it may be possible with nuclear propulsion or solar sails. And to be fair, some of these systems do show genuine promise, but their development will be totally pointless if it is not proven that these systems can achieve constant acceleration travel. But to be honest, I think a lot of these researchers are dreaming, and this idea of constant acceleration travel will probably never be achieved even with these more radical propulsion systems being used, thus confiding humanity to our own star system forever. Well, hopefully that was slightly interesting and hopefully it made sense. If you want to see another space-related video where I scale the universe, 
then uh, you can click here. Yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna leave now. <laughs>